Hey everybody, it's chemistry day. Isn't that exciting? Well, it should be. Anyway, uh, this is another reason I love Saxon math. We're doing chemistry class some or some, I don't know, something in a book or something like that, maybe a co-op co class. And all the other kids are like crying and, you know, stabbing pencils in their ears and stuff like that when it comes to the math and the equations. And you're just breezing along, you know, you know, all the kids are crowding around, you know, you're handing you 10 and $20 bills and all this kind of stuff, you know, it's like a homeschool dance, you know. Anyway, this is called ideal gas laws and they call this ideal because no gas acts this way perfectly, but you know, you can always hope. But that's the equation you want to memorize. You need to write that down and memorize it. When you're comparing uh, two different setups, that's what you're gonna uh, look at. And that P stands for pressure, V stands for volume, and T stands for temperature. So you can compare two gases and the setup will be exactly the same. And you know, you can always look back at your notes if you want to, but just try to memorize this, okay? So, P sub one, V sub one over T sub one equals P sub two, V sub two over T sub two. The, the problems we're gonna be doing um, you can use a calculator on a course to make it easier for yourself. All you're doing is just, you're just sticking in values for P, V, and T twice, and that's it. So all these are just ratio problems. They're not even, they're barely even algebra at all. So let's, do, let's look at something real quickly though. If they give you an equation, okay? In other words, this is your basic equation again. So P sub one, V sub one over T sub one equals P sub two, V sub two, and T sub two. Now these, Pressure and volume and all the temperature, they have these weird names, and don't, don't worry about that. Just make sure you have each one in the right space when you do these equations and uh, the, uh, the ratios. Okay, if you eliminate pressure, <clears throat> in other words, they, they're doing an experiment with two different gases, and the, and the pressure is exactly the same on both of them. Well, if you have two things on both sides of an equation, and like, oh, the pressure is a thousand for both of them, there's no point in multiplying both sides by a thousand. Because you're just gonna, I mean, you know, if you divide each side by a thousand, and they just go away. So if you don't, if the pressure stays the same, that's what they're gonna tell you. They'll say in an experiment, blah blah blah, the pressure stayed the same. Well, if the pressure stays the same, then there's no point in writing the pressure at all. So your new equation is gonna be this with no pressure. I mean, you don't have to even worry about pressure at all. That'll be your new equation. And the same deal with volume. They might say, oh, the volume was kel uh, held constant. Okay, well, there's no point in writing, you know, 325 for the volume for both sides. So don't even bother to write it at all. So just the volume is, is held constant, fine. That's my equation. No volume. Don't need it. And of course, I'm sure you can figure out temperature. Okay, same thing, right? The temperature is interesting because it's at the bottom. So you're going to have just the, you know, the numerator of the equation equal to each other. So that's it. All right. Well, let's try one and look how complicated looking this uh, problem is. Don't be intimidated by it. Okay. Four liters of an ideal gas at a temperature of 800 kelvins at a pressure of 100 newtons per square meter. If the volume were increased to 10 liters and the temperature reduced to 600 kelvins, what would the pressure be? Okay. Let's just all go home. Okay. Anyway, easy thing to do is to do this. Anytime you, anytime you see these problems, don't even think, just write the equation. All right? There you go, okay. All you need to do now is fill in the blanks. You're gonna have one thing that is uh, unknown, so it's a piece of cake. You just do your cross multiplication, there it is, okay. So four liters of an ideal gas, okay. Well, that's gonna be the volume, right? Okay, so let's just make yourself a nice equation here. The sine equation equals an equation. You can even write little dots here if you want. You know, go ahead and write dots. You're going to be multiplying. Okay, four liters <coughs> of some gas. Well, that's your volume, right? So just put four. A temperature of 800 kelvins. You don't even need to write kelvin. You don't need to write anything at all. Just write 800. Okay, the temperature is 800. Yoink, there it is, 800. The pressure was 100 newtons. Don't write newtons, just write 100, okay? You can already see that this fraction is gonna be one half, right? Four, 
400 over 800. Just keep that in mind. Okay. If next, so in other words, we're done with this. This is our first. There you go. Okay. If the volume were increased to 10 liters, well, that's our new part of the equation, right? So the volume here is 10 liters. Okay. So fine, right? 10 there. Okay, the temperature is reduced to 600 kelvins. There it is. Okay, what would the pressure be? You can write P sub, t. you can just write P if you want to. Don't even worry about writing the, the P sub 2. Okay, so now all you're doing is just doing a, you know, an equation. You're just going to solve it here. So you could look and go 100 times 4, uh, you know, uh, you know, let's just pretend you didn't see it. You can just go like this, 400 over 800 equals 10 times P over 600. Let's just say you completely didn't even see that that was a half or whatever, okay? All right. But if you did see that this is half, you would know that this part up here is also going to be half of 600, which will be 300. So 10 times what gives you 300? 30, right? So the answer is going to be 30. Anyway, pretend you didn't see that, okay? So let's just cross multiply. 800 times 10 800 times 10, just add a zero, and times P equals 400 times 600. So 4 times 6, 24. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's start hacking off zeros here. Three zeros, hack. Three zeros, hack. So we have 8 times the pressure is 240. And of course, the 8 into 24 is 3. And of course, just like we said, the pressure is 3. There we go. No complicated algebra, no nothing. You're just plopping stuff in there. In fact, these should be, like in your um, problem sets, uh, these types of problems should be ones you just go bing, 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 and you're done in like one minute. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Okay, here is a different type, and this is the one we talked about just a second ago. Okay, the initial pressure or a quantity of an ideal gas was 400 newtons per square meter, and the initial temperature was 1,200 kelvins. Okay, the volume was held constant. Aha! What was the pressure, blah, 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 temperature, no, 900 kelvins. Okay. This is the key right here. And this is why I put it in red. They won't be red in your book. Okay. But I just wanted you to see that. The volume is held constant. In other words, this, you know, go back to your normal, you know, ideal gas equation. That's it. The volume is held constant. Pointless to even put a V in either, either fraction. So don't. So just put, you know, P sub 1 over T sub 1 equals... P sub 2 over P sub 2. That's it. Let's look at the first one. The pressure is 4 newton, newtons or whatever. Okay, well, there you go. 400. The temperature was 1200. Okay, fine. You can probably already see that that's one third the fraction is. Okay. All right, the volume was held constant. We got that. Okay, what's the pressure? Which means we don't know the pressure, right? If they ask us what was the pressure, that's what we don't know. The temperature has decreased to 900. Well, I'm sure you can probably see that the 400 is one-third of 1,200. You can just go right over here and go, okay, what is one-third of 900? And the answer is going to be 300. Okay, but let's pretend you didn't see that. 1,200 times P equals 4 times 9 is 36. How many zeros? 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, hack, 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 hack. 12 times P is 3,600. Of course, you know, we'll divide by 12, and that ends up being 300, just like we said. There we go. That's it. All right. We'll try one more here. All right. The temperature of a quantity of ideal gas was held constant. Okay. So, now, temperature constant. Remember your uh, formula. So, this is what we're going to have now. We will not have any temperature at all on the bottom. So there you go. That's all you need to write down. Okay. Original pressure, seven atmospheres. Ooh, atmospheres. Okay. So in other words, seven. Original volume, 42. Okay. If the volume was reduced to 10 liters, okay, what was the final pressure? Okay, that'll just be P sub 2 times 10. Okay. Well, seven times 42. I'm just going to flip this. I hate variables on the right side. So I'm just going to write 10 times, we'll call it P. 7 times 42 is 294. Anytime you want to divide something by 10, you just move the decimal over one time. So there you go. That's your pressure. There you go. Okay. 
All right, let's try the practice A and uh, give it a whirl and we'll come back. <clears throat> okay, well again, I'm just gonna write this. Okay, eight liters of an ideal gas, there's your volume. Temperature of 1,000, pressure of 200, okay. The volume were increased to 10 liters, okay, so the volume is 10. The temperature reduced to 800 kelvins, ooh, balmy. What would the pressure be? Well, there you go, okay. So let's figure this thing out here. So we got 200 times 8, 1600 over 1,000, 10 times the new pressure, and then over 800, okay? We can, well, let's just go ahead and do the, the arithmetic here. Cross multiply, 1,000 times 10, 10,000. 16 times 8 is 128. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I get rid of 4. I get rid of 4, and I have it. So P is 128. All right. Okay, let's try B. This is one of those where you, uh, one thing is held constant. So, all right, pause it and give it a whirl. Okay, they tell you the temperature is constant. At, you know what, here's another thing. They tell you it's, oh, held constant at 1400 kelvins. Visualize this. Here's your, here's your normal, uh, uh, equation here, right? Okay, they go, oh, it's held constant. Oh, they're both 1400. Oh, I better write 1400. If you want to write 1400, feel free to write 1400. You could write 14 million if you want to do two. You could write 52 jillion if that's even a number. I think 51 jillion is a number. 52 jillion, not a number. Here, write 51 jillion at the bottom of both of them. Or you know what, better yet, just write, just make a, you know, sad face with two tufts of hair coming out at the bottom of both equations. I don't care what, if you're writing the same thing on the bottom of both equations, who cares? Leave it out. You don't need it. So don't even bother. So don't even bother with 1400 kelvins. If you already did it and it worked, fine, it'll work. No big deal. Okay. The original pressure was 11. So here's my 11. And the original volume was 44. Okay, there we go. This, uh, if the volume were reduced to 4.4, what would the final pressure be? Okay, there we go. Well, 11 times 44 is 484. 4.4 uh, times P, I'm just going to rewrite this, equals 484. That's my equation I want. Okay. Well, Divide by 4.4, that's all you need to do. So it's gonna be 110. That's supposed to be 110. There we go. That's it, okay. All right, happy chemistry-ing. See you guys next time.